It's time now for Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter, coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. International Christian Fellowship is a Bible-believing church that preaches the uncompromised Word of God and prays for you and your needs. Pastor Peter is bringing the message of salvation, healing, and deliverance throughout the world. Now, here is Pastor Peter. Hello, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jesus is the Answer. This is Pastor Peter. I'm going to pray for you and your needs. And I believe that our God is going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you can see the number on your screen, please call. Somebody will pray for you. And I believe that you will be happy that you call. We are studying the ministry of Paul, especially the healing ministry of Paul. We just finished the healing ministry of Peter, St. Peter. And last program we did, that Paul healed one crippled man and he was crippled from the mother's womb. And many people saw that and they started glorifying God. So now the fame of Peter, uh, Paul also went around. And now when the Paul was preaching in one place and teaching and so many people gathered there and some of the people were doing evil things like uh, what you call this evil spirit things ma 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 magicians and all kinds of evil thing but Paul's teaching got so many people turn to living God. And then so many people start bringing handkerchiefs, aprons, some clothes to Paul and start saying, could you please wear this so the power of God will be on this cloth and aprons and the handkerchief and give it to us so we can give it to our loved ones and they can get healed. So many people start bringing this stuff. And Paul start wearing them and give it back to them. And the word of God says, many people got healed. And this story is in book of Acts chapter 19, verses 11 to 20. Now when the people get, start getting healed, delivered and set free, even the demon possessed people got healed. So the word of God said this was the unusual miracle Paul was doing. And we saw another unusual miracle in Peter's life. What Peter did. The people start saying, you walk and let your shadow heal people. And exactly happened. Healing by shadow of Peter and healing people by the handkerchief and apron they never heard in their life. Jesus never gave anyone a handkerchief. People just came and touched the hem of his garment. So the people knew there is a power whenever whoever wearing those clothes and if that person is godly, if that person is God-fearing and the people can get something out of their clothes, handkerchief, or even shadow. And this thing Jesus Christ already predicted. When he was going in St. John chapter 14, verses 12, Jesus Christ said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to my Father. But you will be here, and you will be doing great miracles. Whatever the miracles I did, you will do also and you will do greater miracle than what I have done. So the people believed, especially I'm talking about the Peter believed. And later on, when Paul heard all of these things, he might be believed. If Peter's shadow can heal people, I can give handkerchief to people and a prince and they can get healed. So this 
two unusual miracles Peter and Paul did. And so today, many people sending their handkerchiefs and people are getting healed in the name of Jesus. I did too. Many people I gave a handkerchief and I even heard that demon-possessed people got healed. Some of the people had mold, they got healed, and different kinds of diseases got healed. So here the Paul did so much, so many miracles. And then there, are, there were seven Siva children. They saw what Paul is doing. And this man was a religious man, but he said, Jewish man, he said, hey, you can do it, what Paul doing it. And they start doing it, they start saying, we can also cast out the demons. And they start saying, you know, Jesus did it, the Paul did it, and maybe they are saying Jesus' name or Paul's name, come out, the devil. They will start saying, you know what, I know Jesus, I know Paul, who are you? And the devil, means the demon-possessed man, jumped on those people, and those people were wounded and naked and ran for their life. And all of these things people saw. Some of the people doing witchcraft and making money. And they written so many books about those things. And demonic things they were doing. And when they saw these things, many people got saved, healed, delivered and set free. And they bought all their books the Word of God says almost 50,000 silver coins was the price of those books. And they burned it. And so in today's value, if you take the 50,000 silver coin, it will be thousands and thousands of dollars value. But the point I'm making, when the people got Jesus Christ as their Savior, they received Jesus Christ, they received healing. And those things, the books and the cult books, they throw it out and burn it out, burn it down. So great revival came to that city. So the point I'm making, if Peter's shadow can heal people, if the handkerchiefs can heal people, and today people are using oil, anointing people in the name of Jesus, they are giving handkerchief in the name of Jesus, people getting healed. And you never thought this thing can happen. But it is, in, it is in the Bible. You have to read the Word of God. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, The faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. So read the Bible. Study the Word. And say, if these people did it, and Jesus said it, I believe it, and I can receive it also. And you can receive your healing, you can receive your uh, gift, and you can pray for others. There is nothing impossible with God. God used so many disciples, but here only given few disciples testimonies. Jesus Christ had so many disciples and many people did many things but healing ministry is given by Peter and Paul and there is another person's also healing ministry is given we will be learning later on but here we see Paul was not the uh, what you call called disciple or apostle he came later on as we learned last time he was persecuting church destroying church but God transformed this man and God used this man mightily the people start saying the, these are the people doing world upside down in that particular time Paul says, I reached the whole world in, in their area. And he said, there is no more place to left. But Jesus Christ said, this gospel, 
this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ has to preach around the world and then Jesus Christ will come. People might be thinking, 2,000 years passed. People are preaching, but it's still not people reached by the gospel. You will be surprised. Go on the street, take a microphone and ask somebody, do you know who Jesus is? Do you know what Jesus did? Many people would not know. Why? Because people are not going to church, they are not reading the Bible, and nobody is preaching on the street like Paul and Peter did. People go to church and preach. These days people will not allow you to go and preach on the street. You have to take a permit or license. But point I'm making, we want people to hear the gospel, get healing from God and pass it on to somebody else. I'm doing it, many other people are doing it, and I want you to start doing it. Don't be afraid. St. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God gives you power, victory, energy to do God's work. There is nothing impossible. You have to see Ordinary people like a Peter, Peter was an unlearned man, Paul was an educated man, but the Paul was destroying the churches. People, Peter was just a fisherman. But God used rich, poor, educated, uneducated. He can use anyone. Other day I heard there was a one neurosurgeon. As you know how much money and time it takes to go to medical college, and be a neurosurgeon. But he was a Christian man. He invited people to his house and said, let's have a prayer meeting. And because he's a doctor, many people will come. And he prayed, Lord, send a pastor. We need a pastor in this area. Jesus said, you be a pastor. And he said, Lord, I don't know anything about preaching. I'm a neurosurgeon. Can you imagine? I don't know if Jesus said to him, but I'm just saying it. Jesus could say, if you could go to medical college and be a neurosurgeon, can't you read the Bible and learn about me and tell people about me and give your life to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ will use you mightily? I don't know what Jesus said to him. But I heard, this man today is a pastor. So what I'm trying to say, if you are busy doing other things, this is the best thing. I'm not saying give up your job and do the Lord's work. I'm saying whatever you're doing, wherever you are, be a living witness. First of all, you have to give your heart to Jesus Christ. When you give your heart to Jesus Christ, people are going to notice that you are somebody, you are a, a different person. Your language, your behavior, and you dealing with people, people will know. Sometimes when I see people, I say, are you Christian? Are you born again? They say, yes. I said, I, I thought you might be Christian because I see Christ in you. That is the born again experience. Look at the Paul when he got transformed. He never went back to the world. Look at the Peter, when God filled him with the Holy Spirit, he never, back, he never went back to the world. One time he was backslidden, and that time he was not filled with the Holy Spirit. So what I would say, first of all, give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Find a church where the full gospel is preached. And when you heard the word of God or hear the word of God, tell somebody, I want to be baptized. When you get baptized, Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And when you fill with the Holy Spirit, then you know how to witness. Then you know how to pray. God will give you all these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is no shortage of gifts. God can give you every gift if you ask for it. There is nothing impossible with God. God wants willing vessels. Are you ready for God? 
Would you like to be useful vessel of God? If you are tired of living this sinful life, and if you are tired of living a normal life, and you want some exciting life, there are people looking for something. But they are failing. They don't get anything in the world can make them excited. They do sometimes a little excitement. But after that, sorrow, pain, sickness, disease, shame come attached to those things. But when you serve the Lord, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no sickness, there is no disease, there is a victory in the name of Jesus. We are going to shine for Jesus Christ. And the people who are loving God and following God and whatever that comes on their way, God has given the weapon, the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus Christ. You can resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. You don't have to worry about enemy. Enemy will come like a flood, but God will give you power to resist them. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 says, The greater one lives within us than what is in the world. Who is in the world? The devil. Devil try to do wrong thing and try to entice you to do wrong thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 he says, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbeliever, not the eyes, the minds. And he is after your mind to destroy you. There is a saying, idle person will be having the devil's playground. Devil uses the people who are not doing anything and they want to do something wrong. But if you are child of God, reading the Bible, studying the Word, telling others about Jesus Christ, you'll be busy. I don't know how my time goes. I'm so busy in the Lord. I'm excited what I'm doing. And I never said in my life, why did I follow Christ? Because when you're following Jesus Christ, there is a peace, there is a joy, there is a prosperity, there is a health, and there is all peace and joy. I never, never said in my life, why did I follow Christ? And so many people thinking, oh, Paul followed Christ, but still he had a problem. He had the eye problem, he has a disease, and he asked God for three times, and God says, I, I cannot heal you. Because they said they had the thorn in his flesh. Thorn in the flesh, you do you know what, what we say? If somebody is bugging you, you say, that person is thorn in my flesh. So the people were bugging you. People bugging him. People wanted to kill him. People wanted to destroy him wherever he goes. He said, Lord, take this thorn away. Let the more door open for me. But what Jesus Christ says, my grace is sufficient. That means he said, Jesus Christ's grace is sufficient for every situation. And so after that, he never said, I am still suffering. He says, God delivered me out of all my troubles, even the out of the mouth of lion. So he was not living a defeated life. That's why he could tell other people his testimony. His testimony is given in a, uh, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 26 or 27. So all these places he testified what God has done in his ministry and how he's able to testify and tell others. Otherwise he will not be doing unusual miracle. God will not use somebody who is not living clean and holy life. There are people, they want to do some miracles. There was a one man and he was uh, smoking and drinking and things like that. And I was a teenager at that time and uh, I got sick. I had a high fever. My dad says, I'll call that Pentecostal brother, he can pray for you. I said, Dad, this man smokes. I don't think God is going to hear his prayer. But this man came anyhow and he prayed. I had no faith in his prayer. And I didn't want him to pray for me, but I was so weak, I could not say a word. And then comes another old man. He was a full of the Holy Spirit. 
and a very dedicated man of God. And he saw me. He said, Brother Peter, are you okay? I said, I'm having a high fever. He said, let's pray. And he prayed in the, in the spirit, speaking in tongue. And I prayed with him. And as soon as he said, Amen, I start sweating. My fever left. And I said, Mom, give me something to eat or drink. My mom said, oh, you had a high fever. You cannot eat anything. I said, Mommy, he's gone. Point I'm making. God cannot use the people who are backslidden and the people who do not live for Christ. Some people say, oh, your wounds are saved, saved for you. Well, this man gave, gave his life to God and even though he's smoking and drinking, he will still go to heaven. And people call sometime television and ask them, uh, am I going to go to hell because I'm smoking and drinking? And somebody says, oh no, you're not going to go to hell. Then what? We are giving license to them. And they are doing more. What the Bible says. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, he says, you are the temple of the living God. If you defile the temple of the God, then I will destroy you. So it's a strong word. We are the temple of God. God wants to use us. God wants to glorify His name through us. So we can live a pure and holy life. But somebody says, oh, I cannot live that kind of life. I know it is difficult without Christ. But once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then He will give you supernatural power. I just said a few seconds ago, the greater one lives in you. That one is greater than the person who is outside the world who is trying to entice you. The God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, triune God, lives in you. You have to receive Him. You have to say, Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. When He comes in, then the devil goes out. Then you will have supernatural power to say no to sin. No to bad friends. No to evil things. He will give you grace. And that's the way you can live the victorious life. Would you like to give your heart to Jesus? Then just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Please forgive all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Touch me, Lord, and heal me for the glory of God. I give my life to you and I want to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and Amen. If you pray this prayer, simple prayer, Jesus Christ already came into your heart. He has given you forgiveness for your sins. Once the sins are forgiven, then the sickness and disease will go away. Once you receive Jesus Christ, then the devil has no power. In the name of Jesus, devil runs. If you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, devil has no authority to touch you or anyone who is a child of God. Because God has given us supernatural power. You have to see this and experience this. I cannot tell you how it works. Only I can tell. I was a worldly person. I don't have time to explain everything. But when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, the burden lifted up and He gave me supernatural power. Now I'm living for Jesus Christ. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pray for you and your needs. Maybe you have financial need. Maybe you have physical needs. Maybe your children are sick or suffering. Maybe your wife needs salvation or she is sick or something. Or your loved ones. Or some of your family members are doing something which is not pleasing in the sight of God. And your heart is burdened with those things. Now you gave your life to Jesus. Jesus is going to hear our prayer. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 he says, Our sin comes between God and us. So God cannot touch, God cannot heal, God cannot hear our prayer. So once the sin is gone, then God will hear our prayer. Let me pray for your loved ones. Shall we pray? Touch your hand, touch your body, or touch someone. Let's pray for your loved ones. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I know there are people suffering without God and without Christ. And there are someone, believers, and they are suffering. And they didn't believe that there is a healing for their body. They believe the healing for their soul, but they didn't believe healing for their body. We learn from the Word of God. God wants to heal us. God wants to deliver us. God wants to set us free. So Lord Jesus, touch each and every person who is suffering. Heal them. Deliver them. And set them free. In Jesus' name I pray and I call it done. Amen and amen. Now let me tell you, once somebody prayed for you, do not doubt. Just say, thank you Jesus for healing me. Even though you don't feel it right away, you start thanking God, you will know that your pain is gone. And if there is internal organ having problem, and doctor told you, you have these are, these are the disease, you go for checkup. Go to church and ask pastor. I need the John's Gospel or New Testament. And start reading. And you will see your life will be never be the same. We are bringing this program to you. We have so many material to give it to you. Salvation messages, I have three CDs. The Born Again. We have CDs on Holy Spirit. We have CDs on Water Baptism. We are going to give it to you free. Just write to us, call us, or email us. And if you have money, just send something for shipping and handling. And we'll be more than happy to give it to you. But by chance, if you come to church and ask any program, we'll give it to you free. Now the time is almost gone. What we're going to do, we're going to close this program, but we are going to finish Paul's ministry. Now, may God richly bless you and use you more and more for His glory. Amen and Amen. You've been listening to Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter of International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. If this program has been a blessing to you, please let Pastor Peter know. Write to Pastor Peter at Post Office Box 5033, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19111. Again, that's Pastor Peter, Box 5033, Philadelphia, PA, 19111. Pastor Peter and his prayer partners are taking your calls right now. The number is 215-342-3759. Again, that's 215-342-3759. You can also send email to icfprayerline at comcast.net. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., International Christian Fellowship has a worship service with communion and healing service. You can find more information at www.internationalchristianfellowship.org. This is a faith ministry. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. And please remember to tune in next time for Jesus is the Answer.